It is Tuesday, April 26, 2022. This is another edition of Baseball Today. That is my sweatshirt wearing friend, Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose. Way to be repping the brand. You know, sometimes I look at this sweatshirt and it's a beautiful sweatshirt. I want to share it with people. That happened this morning. I went in my closet and I said, that thing looks majestic today. Let's wear it out to drop my kids off at school. And bam, I brought it to the show. Well, you know, here we are a few weeks into the baseball season, and uh, I have been representing several different minor league clubs, which have been sending me hats. So this is awesome. This is from the Midwest affiliate of the uh, of the Brewers, the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers. So their usual. What? Yes, the Timber Rattlers. So usually yeah. their hats look like this and they're damn cool. So I'm holding up a T-shirt for those of you on the podcast or on joining us on AMP. I want you to go over to our YouTube so you can check them out. This is the utter. I, I got to get this right here. So I want to make sure I'm saying it right. So just be patient. One second. I think it's the utter tuggers is the hat that I'm wearing which is absolutely insane. The utter tuggers. Hold it on. It looks like a triceratops. Yep. It's not a triceratops. No, it would be an, like, like a fighting. It looks like a fighting cow because it's got udders on it. I mean, tell me that that's not a sweet lid. I usually am with you on this stuff. I don't know if I'd, if I'd rock that one, to be honest. With okay. You. Well, you know what? We'll be, we'll be putting it out on our John Boy Media social channels as always. You can judge for yourself. If you fe feel so inclined, hop on the Utter Tugger train with me. The Timber Rattlers, I've played there. Now, that's a nice logo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cool. They sent me uh, a couple of shirts that I can't fit in right now because, because I'm a little large. So I passed them on to my, my kids. And that's all right. Okay. Brady and Josh can represent. So uh, those of you that are joining us, by the way, those of you that are joining us on AMP Live, we appreciate it. We'll get to your calls and everything coming your way, but let's get it going with the game that ended last, last night. And that would be the Dodgers and Diamondbacks, and it gave us our first complete game of the year, a complete game shutout, no less, for Walker Bueller for the first time in his career. Three measly singles is all he allowed, 10 strikeouts along the way, and at 27 years old, he said, this was a huge, huge accomplishment for me. Were you were you overcome with emotion because we see it so rarely now? I love it because I know in his mind, yes, he wants the personal achievement of the shuddy. Um, it does mean more nowadays, but for him, he wants to save the bullpen. Like I like when starters have that mentality, like guys take the day off today. I got you. Or at least like, Hey, you don't got to work four innings today. Maybe I'm going to have you go two innings. Like I want starting pitchers to have that. I know most of them want to do that. Some of them aren't allowed to do that. I thought it was pretty cool that um, Dave Roberts kind of knew he wasn't taking Walker out. He'd already been stretched out a little bit longer, 98 pitches, I think, in his second start. And I guess Walker kind of just walked by him and said, I ain't coming out of this game. And uh, he didn't. And so it is nice to see. I know we don't get to see it a ton. Um, but for me, it's, it's more about giving the bullpen a rest and, and taking care of the boys. And I think Walker was, uh, happy he got to do that last night. Well, uh, I understood that, that Dave Roberts told us when we saw him in spring training, I, I said, you know, how far behind are the pitchers going to be because of the lockout? And he said, we're going to be between like one to one and a half rotations behind. So now you're going to see guys start to throw over a hundred pitches on a regular basis. Now, you know. I don't want to be the guy who's like, well, I remember when, but for some reason people have been conditioned when you get to a hundred pitches and we're all watching the same thing. Like how many pitches does the guy have? Like he's going to spontaneously combust when he gets to a hundred pitches. These are big, strong guys who is there really a, like Dave Roberts said after the game and Bueller, by the way, finished with 108 pitches. He said 110 was his number. So really if he gets to two outs in the ninth, and he's at 110, you're not going to let him finish because if he gets to 114, all of a sudden he's going to break down. Like, I think we have to stop with that mentality. I understand there's got to be guidelines. I understand there's got to be buildup. But you know what? Not all 108 pitch games are the same. This dude was barely sweating out there. Three measly singles on the night. That's You're exactly right right there. He had a lot of low stress pitches. And, and everything was working for him. I mean, his changeup was filthy last night. He threw that a ton, got a bunch of strikeouts on that. But he had all four pitches working. He might have more than four pitches, but he had four pitches working last night. And when a guy like Walker Bueller is controlling it the way he was controlling it, 
I mean, you're just not going to win that game. And I think the Diamondbacks knew that. I think Seth Beer after the game said he just got tipped the cap through a heck of a game. Um, I like that he, I, I, I like that we're going to see guys throw over 100 pitches. I don't know why or where that came from. You know, the 100 pitches, and now all of a sudden we got to get this guy out of the game right away. It's an arbitrary number. I think nobody wants to put their ass on the line, Chris, and say, well, that's what let's it keep is. That, let's keep that guy out there. He looks fine. You know, the pitchers right. want to stay out there. If a pitching coach sees that he's still going, the velocity is still there, uh, not a lot of stressful innings, I, I think that you would see that more often. It's just the guys that want to, <laughs> that want to be the person that say, keep him in, and then he gets hurt or something. I don't know, man. Well, all right. So we can all, we can all agree that athletes have never, ever been in more peak shape than they are today, right? We know with nutrition, workout, et cetera. They also have access to data more so than ever yeah. before. Is it possible that agents are getting in on the story and saying, hey, listen, here's the plan for you. Like, we have to keep you here for longevity's sake so that when you are, twenty, you know, I think Walker Bueller is going to hit free agency if he gets there at 29 or so. You know, like, he's already had an arm surgery before. So he wants to make sure that he's going to get his shot at $200 million. I can't blame him. No, I mean, look, everybody wants – career longevity i mean the player wants that the agent wants that the team wants that they, they want you to perform for a long time so i mean i get it but does it seem like it's working does the pitch count seem like it's working don't we have guys getting tommy john like all the time and having right. you know the thoracic right. outlet syndrome is is here like i i guess i don't have the data in front of me but it doesn't seem like it's working to me or like it's not improving everything right i i don't know I don't know. I just think I think you could make any sort of argument you want based on the how you want to twist the numbers. All I can say is it's fun when guys go the distance. It's great when a guy throws a shutout. It certainly isn't what we had back in the 80s and the early 90s and things like that. But that's fine. I'm not one of those guys like, well, it has to go back to the old days. But it is fun to see it. And it is exciting when a guy gets a chance. And I was happy to see Walker Bueller achieve it for the first time. Uh, Jay started a really big homestand with a win over the Boston Red Sox. Bo Bichette, first career grand slam. Uh, Jay's now lead all of baseball with 25 homers. They led the show last year in homers as well. Is this the most complete roster going in the American League as of right now? Yes, I, I think it is. I think the White Sox, when healthy, are, are up there as well. I think there are a couple teams in the National League that are probably better on paper um but in the american league i don't think there's anyone as deep as as these guys who's better by the way in the national league dodgers, dodgers. and mets dodgers, yeah. i'm not willing to ready to give that to the mets i'd have to i'd have to think i'm honestly maybe the padres too i don't know oh i like the giants I like the what about the giants giant i don't know there's a lot of teams i like a lot okay i'm, I'm focused on the blue jays right now okay. okay go ahead focus blue jays very good team we know they can swing the bat um their bullpen has got some guys out there that can breathe fire and they've been doing really well. And the starting pitching is deep. So I like this team a lot. Um, going through the roster, I like how it's constructed as well. A bunch of guys they drafted. Uh, Teoscar Hernandez, one guy that really flies under the radar. Do you know who he got traded for? 14 innings of Francisco Liriano in 2017 oh from the Astros. Astros gave him to the Blue Jays. This guy is a freaking monster, dude uh liriano has been in some interesting trades hasn't he came over he sure has he came over Booth, from the yeah with Booth Bonser and joe nathan for aj Przinski. it was a three for one trade Booth Bonser. yeah so then and then liriano goes to the white Sox, brings over eddie escobar okay what, we're getting off track here but i do think the blue jays have right now the most talented roster in the american league um they can mash the ball. They can pitch. I saw them play a little bit of defense. I think the numbers are iffy on them there, but um, it's fun to watch them. Yeah. And Teoscar, I think, is dinged up, right? He's still – he's banged up. And He's on, uh, he's on a 10-day aisle right now. Yeah. But he's starting to swing the bat, I think I just read the other day, and should face live pitching soon. So they'll get another stick back. Yeah, defensively, they worry me a little bit. Actually, I watched a lot of Bichette. He's – He's all over the place at shortstop. It's, sometimes he looks great out there. Right. <laughs> that Yankee this, series we watched, it was incredible. Yeah. And then there were times in Boston, he was firing it into the, you know, eighth row. And I was like, just plant your feet, bro. <laughs> Let's go. Um, bullpen, Romano has solidified things. I know he gave up the walk off to Pena the other day, but that's okay. Uh, Simber has been sensational since they traded for him last year with the Marlins. 
you know, they've gotten nothing out of Ryu. He's been banged up so far. Barrios is a guy I just want to see take the next step. Like, he's the one. I just feel like there's more. There's more there. There's always one or two pitches for Barrios to just kind of sneak over the plate. Yeah. It seems like he gives up a big hit here and there. You know, it's – it's. Uh, I get that. You know what's incredible? We just – I just said on this show right now, 30 seconds ago, this is the most complete roster in the AL right now, but they can add and they probably will. Totally. Add. So like, you know, if you're a Toronto fan, you know, be ready for this. It's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Right. So we were, we heard that they were even after the Chapman trade that they were in on Jose Ramirez, they're going to make a play for something at some point, whether it's because of injury or somebody's underperforming, they're going to make a move somewhere rotation or bullpen, bullpen. I'm, I'm telling you they feel like the time is now they feel i i feel like that ownership group says these fans have been through enough the last few years between having a team playing in dunedin and playing in buffalo and not being here in the country that place is a that's a concert that is a rock concert when it's going on and could you imagine having a seven game series in toronto like that'd be great and, and look, they're not, they're not paying, you know, some of their young superstars, right. anything yet. So this is the time now they can go after before they have to pay these guys. I know yeah. they've, they've put some money out there. They've signed some guys, you know, obviously Springer's making a lot of money and they signed Barrios to a long-term deal. So like they're, they're spending money, but they're still having these guys for making basically league minimum. So uh, now is the time to go add and go after this thing. It's shoot, man, let's go blue Jays fire me up. Quick reminder that Baseball Today is presented to you by our friends over at Muggsy Jeans. Head on over to Muggsy.com. Use the code word TODAY. You're going to get 10% off your entire order. And I will tell you, you cannot order just one pair of jeans. They are the most comfortable jeans ever. And for a guy whose weight fluctuates as much as mine does, when I'm bigger, they grow with me. When I'm at the weight I want to be at, they come down with me. And they don't look too baggy. I don't know how they get it done. I'm not a jeans engineer, but they figure out a way. So go get yourself a pair of jeans or two or three or five because they've got the vast array of colors. Listen, you could be a traditionalist. You can go blue, bluer, bluest. I went out of my comfort zone. I got charcoal gray jeans for the first time ever. They're really cool. Uh, I can mix and match with them but they've got the whole rainbow covered. So if you want to go like a little more fun and go like red or green or whatever you want to do, you got that. If you want to go a little more traditional, that's fine. All you got to do is check out the website. It's mugsy.com. The code word is today. You're going to save 10% off your entire order. I guarantee you, if I look halfway decent in a pair of jeans and my wife after 25 years of marriage still thinks I look hot because of the jeans, Imagine what it can do for you. Uh, you know who's firing everybody up? Jock Peterson. Mm. Uh, yep, Giants get the one-game series win up in Milwaukee. Uh, he had another bomb, tied for the major league lead with his sixth. First, I want to start with the talking back and forth, and we don't uh, we don't want to get into what was said and what wasn't because there's a lot of strange stuff on social media, and we don't know exactly because Jock didn't address that in particular he did, he did talk about getting heckled he stepped out of the box a couple of times while guys were yelling at him then he mashes and as he crosses home plate he gives him a big old f u p word i mean he really i'm trying to clean up my language a little bit p but he word? let him what's that yeah i don't know <laughs> uh rhymes with mussy so <laughs> kind of um not really, really. is the word pussy yeah, it is. Okay. That's what it is. It's pussy. <laughs> you effing pussy people. <laughs> anyway, um, I loved it. I loved <laughs> seeing him talk shit back to them. Because you know what? This is this can't be a one way thing. I think it can be though. That's oh that's, stop. This is this is my opinion. This is my opinion. I don't. I got yelled at so much, dude. Like when you when you play crappy on the field, people are gonna yell at you, no matter where you are. Even if you're in Minnesota and people are in Minnesota nice, doesn't matter. Um, I just don't want to give them satisfaction because the people that are yelling at you, they're idiots. They're idiots. You know these aren't these aren't real fans. They're not nice people. These are usually just idiots, drunk usually, or just having a bad day, mad at themselves. I don't want to give them the satisfaction of me answering back like, "Hey, you got in my head." 
you know, even if you do hit the homer and you want to, you know, do some, I just, I personally would rather not even acknowledge them because you know, they're going to go back to their friends and they're going to say, Jock Peterson called me a pussy. And like, they, they're going to live for that. They're going to tell that story forever. You know what I mean? So I'd rather just Dude. like not even acknowledge, walk back to the dugout, celebrate with my teammates. Keep it classy. <laughs> keep it classy. It's not even about imagine keeping if- it classy. It's just not giving those idiots them the satisfaction. satisfaction. I get it. But you know what? That's the beauty of sports in particular is that not everybody's wired the same, right? Yeah. You've played with a ton of guys who you can get in their face and they'll take it and it'll light a fire on them. And then there are guys you can't do that with because they'll just crumble. So I'm okay with, and, and jock is one of those guys. And I don't know where it came from. I don't know if it's always been this way. I would, I, I really want to get him on the Rose rotation one time because I, I want to see where this fire came from. You know, he turned into like this quasi one year rental rock star. All of a sudden who's a pearl wearing <laughs> dye my hair, blonde sort of dude. And he's taken it to another level. Like, I really think that he loves just talking shit to people and having fun. It's weird that, um, is the reason he hasn't gotten a multi-year deal because his, because I mean, the guys had three at bats against left-handed pitching this year. Is that why he doesn't get a multi-year deal? I mean, maybe he's, he's streaky. I think teams like the energy there. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious about it too. I mean, I, I could see him having a good year in San Francisco this year and then going somewhere and demanding a few years, uh, maybe with some options or something like that, because he does bring that spark. We talked about it on this show quite a bit. You need guys to bring energy through the clubhouse. Well, 162. It's a long season. Uh, you're going to hit some lulls. Um, and guys like Jock can get you out of those lulls, whether it's on the field, you know, hitting a big homer and doing something like that, what he did last night, or in the clubhouse, you know, showing up, wearing something silly, getting the boys laughing, you know, like he's got that style that can do it with the pearls in the hair. So uh, Jock is a very valuable player. I think he needs to find the right fit. Maybe San Francisco is it. He is a Bay boy. Uh, maybe he finds a home there. Maybe him and Kapler just hit it off. And what a reality show that would be. Cap and Jock. Man, those are two, those are two personalities right there. So, yeah, I'm trying to look at his, oh, they bought him out at the end of his contract in Atlanta. It's weird. I just feel like he's, I mean, listen, $6 million is a lot of money, but it feels like he's, he's worth more than a $6 million player. I know you're, you're exactly what you're worth, whatever people are paying you on the open market, but particularly when you get to October, he's got a dozen playoff homers do you have baseball reference up right now i do i do okay type in his name and look at his picture i got it look at his picture dude he's cheesing looks great (laughs) it is great that that looks like clean cut jock peterson i wouldn't know this guy has all that swag and like all his stuff that he does off the field here let's let's all do our jock peterson he's happy (laughs) he's back he's back he's back home that's awesome good for him uh, great game last night in St. Louis. Mets and Cardinals, Scherzer, Michaelis, each with seven shutout innings. My guy Trevor May came in, had a rough eighth, but then the Mets saved him with five in the ninth. Edwin Diaz gets the save. Uh, what was your favorite part of that three-hour story? You're right. This was an incredible game. Good pitching performances, wild ending. I started to think about that play, the Dom Smith ground ball, you know, two runs score on it. That is going to be a spring training PFP PSA type play on both sides. Yep. Okay. Because the one thing you're going to do with pitchers and PFPs for people who don't know, stands for pitchers fielding practice. It's ridiculous. Pitchers stink at it. It's the only time you do it during the year is in spring training, which doesn't make sense. Hey, pitchers go do PFPs during the year. You st- Anyways, the one play that you always work on is runner at second base, ground ball to the first baseman, pitcher has to cover, hit the bag, and all you have to do, point home and say, check home, check home. Every baseball player that's played professional ball knows that spring training, you're doing that play over and over and over again. And you're going to hear the coaches saying, this could win us a ball game. This could lose us a ball game. Well, Gallegos did not check home fast enough last night and on the flip side for the Mets 
base running sucks, but you do it in spring training to get your legs under you. And you're going to hear your coaches again, say this could win us a game. This could lose us a game. McNeil gets the great jump. He understands what he's supposed to do. Their base coach waving him in beats the throw because Gallegos doesn't check home quick enough. He was busting his ass the whole time. So this is spring training. They're just going to point to this play and say, see, I told you this particular play can win or lose you games. And it did. And it was awesome to see the hustle from everybody. Uh, Goldschmidt had a great play on it too. Like it, great it was just play. A, a phenomenal baseball game. That's exactly what I was. I was hoping you were going to answer. Cause that's where I wanted to go with it. It was just the microcosm of a singular play where there was so much that happened with it. You even start with the fact that it, the ball took such a wicked hop on Goldschmidt. It's a laser. It was a laser, but then it took a weird hop at the end and it threw him so severely off balance that I don't think he, he could get up as quickly as he wanted. And then with, with Gallegos, I mean, Dom Smith did a great job busting it. There's one other thing. I hate when guys slide into first. I hate it. But there's he, a reason he did it right there. Because he's running side by side with Gallegos. And Gallegos, if he's running, if Dom Smith is up on his feet, can tag him. So if you go down low, it, you avoid the tag, and now he has to beat you to the base, but you didn't. Okay. That's, so there's you know a couple what? times That's, where it's okay. That one's fair then. I, I'll, I'll go with you on that. That's uh, – that's a good good call on your part. But we can ask our buddy David Cohn, by the way. I think there was a play where I, I forget if he was playing with the Mets or who it was, but there was a play at first base that was very close, and he started, I think, to argue with the ump, and another run came around and scored. Yeah. So I think I remember see seeing a, the highlight there. Yeah, you'll see that a handful of times a year, but this is one that totally changed the complexion of a game. And afterward, our guy Trevor May – Gets on social media. He always goes, whenever the Mets win, it's like LFG Mets, something like that, and a couple of emojis. He did not put the emojis last night, and I was curious to read his mentions afterward and see if people were going to be roasting him. Everybody was like, hey, it's okay. You know, the guy's got your back tonight. It's just amazing how different the Twitterverse is when you win oh as God. opposed to when you lose, because if he hopped on there and then just said, hey, sorry, people would have been like, you motherfucker. Get off social media. Stop getting on Twitch. You gamer moron. <laughs> like it's everybody was like, it's okay. You know, we got your back. We got something special happening here. Hey, Twitter might be changing, bro. Elon buys Twitter. Maybe he oh, has to stop. authenticate every user. I think things might change. If you have to be a real person to put your like real info there. Yeah. Game could change. I could be losing half my followers. You never know. <laughs> All those bots All that right. you bought early on. <laughs> yeah. So what? I mean, you know, got to do something to create your brand. <laughs> I didn't buy my bots. Well, maybe a few. No, I didn't. Maybe. Uh, Aaron Judge, 30th birthday celebration. Sure looked like Josh Donaldson was having a hell of a time. I think he was partying it up. Uh, if you could go to one major leaguer's birthday, milestone birthday, who would it be? There's, there's two that I thought of kind of right away. One guy just retired, and it's Jake Arrieta. Like, he – Oh, God. I, I spent some time with the guy, and, like, he knows how to have a good time, and I, I vibe yeah. with him. So yes, you I do. would like to do that. <laughs> but – Yes, you do. I mean, and Judge is, like, another really good one because you're, like, king of New York. I'm going to go with the guy that's been – I think he's been there longer than Judge, Giancarlo Stanton. I, I know his parties – firsthand how good they are um so you're all you're in new york you got 300 million dollars here so he's hanging with like what do you say the hoity toities yeah the hoity toities like he, he's hanging with the hoity toities of new york i want that world like i watch billions i watch that show and like all the stuff that they do i want to be in that world for a day and i think john carlos stanton is in that world so i've seen his new year's eve parties and then in new york Giancarlo Stan, no doubt. It's a pretty good one. Yeah, I used to uh, work at a work out at a gym where his buddy was one of the trainers. Really close, like high school friend, football buddy, and um, he used to go travel all the time with Gene. They'd have some Him, pretty good stories. Ricky Nolasco and AJ Ramos just partying it up all over the world. That's what happens. Um, I would go with. Uh, we saw Hosmer's wedding. The photos Ooh, from that wow. thing. So if he has any money left after that wedding, <laughs> he does. He I does. imagine he would 
he would throw a pretty good birthday party too. I think, you know, I think it looks pretty good. I didn't get invited to the Hosmer wedding. Kind of upset about that. That's okay. You're like the uh, one. But I have, I have partied with Haas quite a bit back in the day, and that's a good choice, Chris. Yeah, you would have he's a lot a good of hang. With him. Yeah, he's, he's a good hang. hang. He's, he's a, good, a hang. good hang. What do you have coming up on John Boy? Uh, we are filming the Wednesday episode of Talking Baseball. Um, a little bit later today, we all bring a topic and talk about it. So we'll be doing that um before we have the friday recap uh and then you and i will be here monday through friday 11 30 eastern what about you uh trevor may episode is out and then right after we're done today uh i've got back-to-back podcasts i have to tape um austin hedges of the cleveland guardians will be joining us he'll give us his vantage point of what happened in new york uh plus a lot of stuff we got to cover with him just calling games uh angel hernandez we're going to be talking about when umpire when you know he's all over the place how do you handle that sort of stuff uh he's really funny that's his second time on as a co-host that'll be really good i am also taping one because of my nfl draft duties i got to get ahead of the game i am so looking forward to catching up with mark grant mud padres Ooh. analyst one of the best in the biz he and don orsillo i i think they're the best broadcast booth. They're right up there with, with the Mets who obviously are great and the giants as well. Um, Yankees are very strong depending on who they pair with Michael K a lot of the times. Uh, but they're one of the best booths around. They have so much fun and mud. Like I've known him for years. I didn't even know he was the number 10 overall pick the year he came out in 1981, the number 10 out of Joliet, Illinois. Ooh. So, and made his major league debut at age 20. 20. That's awesome. Yeah. He's just a great storyteller and a fun loving guy. And I think everybody will love that. So hedges is coming out Thursday. Mud will come out next Monday and I can't wait to do it. So it's going to be awesome. Uh, special shout out to our producer extraordinaire for the day. The headband wearing Dan Rourke. Very special guy for Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose. We will see you Wednesday on baseball today.